In this video, we're going to have a look at how you can start using the dynamic format strings feature. We're going to look at two different use cases of when you could use this one, which is when you want to dynamically change the units as well as different currencies in the same field, all of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So formatting how your data is displayed on your report pages makes it easier for your users to consume and see the type of information that you're showing within your pages. And there are many ways that you can do this in Power BI, and they've just recently improved this by creating and allowing us to create dynamic format strings. So let's start with a quick demo here. I've created a very simple Power BI report here with an empty page. We have a few tables that I want to look at. But for now, we're going to look at this uh, headcount uh, table here. So I'm going to drag it in here as a table. I'm going to put the headcount in there. So as you can see, because the headcount is a number type column, it's created a sum for each of our different countries. And these headcounts are in different units. So you have ranging from, you know, countries that have a very low headcount, like Indonesia, to uh, big countries like China. And by the way, these tables don't really make any sense at all. The only reason why I'm showing it like this is because it's showing us units within the same column, but in different ranges where your users might not care too much about the intricate details like the decimal points or even low values. And I just want to show you how you deal with this by you know, changing units within your, your, your columns. So how you would typically deal with this um, is let's say you have a, you, your users are not too keen on knowing the 68, 568, they might just want to know it's around 500. So you would go and update that on the format option. So we're going to go, so we're going to open up the format pane here and then under specific columns we're going to select the sum of headcount here and under values you can change the display units here to either thousands which will add case to our head sum of headcounts here or you can make it millions but as you can see, there is a little bit of a problem here. If we choose a display unit that is too high, it doesn't show us those units that are too low. So you can see China has uh, 1 billion in its headcount. So if we try to um, go to that level, it will show at 0 million to the other ones. And if we go uh, too low, like thousands, for example, you can see that China is still dominating. And, we, and this is one of the use cases of when you would want to use the dynamic format strings. You might want to have a different aggregation or how to display the units for every single individual uh, headcount here in our list. So in order to use the dynamic format string, you first have to make sure that your Power BI desktop is on the latest version of Power BI, which is the April 2023. And you need to make sure that the dynamic format strings is enabled within your preview settings. So under format uh, options and settings here under options, you will find under preview features at the bottom here, dynamic format strings for measures. So you just need to enable that and the dynamic format string option should be available to you. So now uh, what we're going to do is we're going to try and apply that uh, dynamic uh, format string here in our table. So we'll select the column here. And what uh, was in the documentation is that when you select this drop down here, it should show uh, another option here called dynamic, but it doesn't show here. And that's because we are selecting a column and uh, not a measure. And at least from what I understand, dynamic format strings only works with measures at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new measure. I'm going to name it total headcount. And then we're just going to just count sum the head count from our table, similar to what we're doing already here in this table, except it's in a measure. So I'm going to now drag that total head count measure, which shows the same values as our sum here. And now if we select that measure and choose the drop down on that uh, format at the top, you will now have this option dynamic, which lets you modify um, and add logic to, to your format strings. 
So if you click that, so now what it's done is it's created a format string here in our formula bar, which is just zero, which is basically there's nothing. You can switch now between your dynamic format string to your measure. So this is the calculation that we've just done. And then the format string here. So what type of uh, format strings uh, could you use here? So there are a few different ways that you can use this. And I think if you've already used the format function before, it's basically the same thing. So I'm going to type a format string that I'm familiar with. And let's say we want to abbreviate this into thousands, like we've just done with our column here in our table. So I'm going to put uh, like this. So number comma dot zero thousands like this. So if you hit enter, oh, maybe we don't need the equals there. So you will see that it's abbreviated our total headcount here to the nearest thousands as we would expect. So how it works is the number sign is, uh, is a wild character. The comma means add the commas in between the thousands and uh, the dot zero is to show the decimals up to one decimal point. Now, as you can see, it works at the moment, almost similar to how the display units uh, work, which is just using one value or the, the static format string that you define here. Now, uh, what's interesting about this format uh, string that you can is that you can add your own your own logic to it, your own calculations to check what the value is for your context. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to write a measure here, similar to, to how you would typically create a measure. So we're going to create first a variable, which is the uh, head count. And it's basically just the sum of our head count values here. And then we're going to create a switch statement. So it's basically just DAX. And, and the beauty is that you can create your own calculations like this to customize how this dynamic format strings will work. So I'm just going to create a switch statement. And we're going to say if the head count is less than a thousand, then we don't want to use any format string. So we'll just make it a zero like this. However, if the head count is less than a million, which is, let me just see, I think that's a million, yeah, six zeros, then we want to use this thousands that we've just uh, written here. So I'm going to use again, like this, zero K. And then let's do another one for billions, because obviously we have we have Japan, uh, China as 1.2 2 billion. So we just want to make sure that we account for those that are in the billions. So I'm going to make one. Is that 1 billion? Yeah. So nine zeros. And then for billion, we want to use like this comma, comma, comma. I think I missed one comma there. Dot zero million. So anything below 1 billion, show it in million uh, display units. And then if there, if it is greater than or equals to 1 billion, then we want to show it as 1 billion. Did too many there. Like this. All right. If we hit enter, so you will see that we have now different dynamic format strings for every single row in our table. You can see that depending on what the total headcount is for the country, it changes what the format string is based on that value. So China now, instead of showing all of the numbers, it abbreviated to billions. 79,000 is showing as case. And then you have anything below 1000 doesn't have any format string. So this is one of the use cases of when you would use a dynamic format string. So now let's move on to another use case that you might find that dynamic format strings might be useful to you. So I have another table here, the products table, and I'm going to bring it in here. So we have a different values or different prices for our different products here in the same table. But as you noticed, for each of these products, there are different currencies. Now, these currencies are from different countries like British pounds or Philippine pesos, US dollars. And you might want to show instead of the numbers here, you might want to show the symbol next to it. So the normal way that you would do it 
is by going to format and changing it to currency. But the problem is when you set it to currency, it's basically a static way to change the currency. Now you can change the currency uh, type here, like uh, pounds to euros to Philippine pesos. But if you wanted a way to change the uh, symbols dynamically based on what the currency value is here in our column, this is when you would use dynamic format strings. So let's try to do the same thing here, right? So let's start by first creating our measure for our um, unit prices. Uh, so unit price value like this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to change the format to dynamic. And then we're going to type some some calculations here. So first, we're going to get whatever the currency is in the, our current row context. So that's pretty easy. You just simply get max, uh, whatever the currency is in our product. And then what you're going to do is you're going to hit the return. And we're going to create another switch statement here. So we're going to say if that currency is equals to GBP, uh, we're just going to use GBP for now, then use the pound sign. In fact, use the pound sign currency. So it adds a, a pound sign at the front. Um, otherwise, actually, let's just leave it as it is for now. Let's just make uh, everyone else will be a dollar sign. So you can see exactly what will happen. So unit price. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, I'm getting confused. I needed to add it there. So here we go. So you can see the last column here, unit price shows the pound sign at the front of the unit price. If the currency is British pounds for everyone else, it adds the dollars, which is incorrect, but we will fix that in a second. So the reason why I didn't complete the uh, switch statement here is because this is not a good way to handle currencies, especially if you might have, let's say, more than uh, five or 10 currencies. It means that you will need to create a different switch statement line by line for each of those currencies. So a more efficient way to deal with this is by creating and having your own currency table. So that's exactly what I've done here. There is a relationship here between the products and the currency table and the currency table looks just like this. So the code is linked to the sign of what we want to use in our dynamic format string. And we will use this to refer from the products table to this currency table, which is why we needed to create a relationship to go to this table. What you'll notice is that because we're using the products table to filter to go to the currency table, I've created a cross relationship to for the products table to have a filter going towards the currency table, because otherwise that logic won't work. So what I'm going to do now, we're going to go back to the unit price, we're going to go back to the formats here. And we're going to instead of writing the switch statement, we're going to change a few things. So we're going to get whatever the current value is. So it's the same thing. But I prefer to use selected value to make sure that there's only just one value. And then we're going to use the currency sign here. And, and because there's already a relationship, we don't need to create a logic for it here. We can just simply say, give me whatever the currency, the sign is, and then concatenate it with the whatever number you have there. So if you hit enter, here you go. So you can now see that for every single currency, the unit price shows what is the currency of that product is, as well as the correct sign and symbol for those currencies. One other thing that I forgot to mention is that one of the reasons why you'd want to use a dynamic format strings as opposed to, you know, just creating it as a text is that the dynamic format strings preserve the numerical formats of your columns. So what does that mean? So normally, for example, if you just added K's or B's or M's, it changes your measure into an output that is a text, which means that if you sort your columns, it won't sort in the order that you might expect. Whereas as you can see here, even though we are showing in different abbreviations, the total headcount measure, it still honors the actual value underneath that measure. So you can see that 1.3 billion is still at the top um, as the highest, even though it has fewer numbers, technically speaking, if you look at it as a text. What that also means is that you can use this as part of charts and graphs without having to worry about your charts breaking if you're using things like bar charts, for example. Now, this might not be a good view because we are 
let's see. If I choose a bar chart here instead, the proportions aren't good because obviously we have a billion there is China, but you can see what I mean. Like in if you used and changed it into a text format, you won't be able to see these values as a bar chart like this because it won't be a number type column. And that's really it for this video. I know that these are just a few of the use cases that you can use the dynamic format string. Luckily, the Power BI team has released a blog post showing the other different types of use cases of when you would use the dynamic format string feature. I'll leave a link to that blog post in the description box below so you can check it out for yourself. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really liked this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you on the next one. Bye-bye.